Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, today we have as our guest Christian Clifford, award-winning author, and he's an expert on uh, the mission trails in California and and on Father uh, Junipero Serra, uh, who all these were boyhood heroes of mine. I was raised on the El Camino Real in California, and my mother took me to so many of the missions, and it, there's such, so much richness there and so much confusion and twisted history that we think it'll be cool to have this conversation with Christian Clifford. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to remind you, everyone, we have our new book, 12 Rule, Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, we're currently working on a trail guide to go along with it. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a book that's for men, but women love this book too. Uh, something that you can uh, get for, you should read women, but you can, though you mama bears out there, you can also get it for the men in your lives in your life and uh, a great thing for fathers to read with their sons and and it's b really been hitting really well it's in all the bookstores Barnes and Noble and everything else and it's number five in Christian men's books so um, please uh, get this uh, we need to get this out it's a message that uh, reclaiming manly manliness and we know we know you you believe that too so this is a great way to do it it gets it's written in, with a cowboy sort of theme so who doesn't love cowboys speaking of trail guides we have someone with us today Christian Clifford who has a trail a, a pilgrimage trail uh, along the missionary trail of California Christian Clifford Aloha welcome to the show Aloha. thanks so, for having me so where are you right now what town are you in San Mateo, California. So San Mateo, way up there. Where, how far did the mission trail go? How much further north than that did it go? Uh, Sonoma. So Sonoma. North, north, north of, uh, San, so I'm just south of San Francisco by about 15 miles. Mm -hmm. And the trail ends at Mission Sonoma, which is in the wine country, probably about 40 miles, 45 and then, miles. And then the next church that you go to, ancient church that you go to up there is the Russian, there's a Russian uh, uh, church Orthodox. there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Fort Ross, right? Yeah, on the coast. Yeah, yeah. So my mother. Yeah. So so I was raised in uh, the Monterey Bay area, and I the the, the little if, if you've ever gone up Pacific Coast Highway or Highway, what is it, one hundred one or Highway one, you will see these little these little uh, posts with a with a small mission bell, all right. all up and down the coast of California, and it means that you're. Um, you're driving on or walking along the great mission uh, highway that the early uh, missionaries uh, developed. And, and, and so there we go. And that's it. And so if you're watching on, on YouTube, you can see what Christian is holding up. So I just want to give this background. Being raised in California, my mother being a Catholic and, be, and loving history. She would pile us into the car with my dad, me and my three sisters, and we'd go to San Juan Batista. We'd go to all these different missions, and she would tell the story. And when I was raised in California, I went to the public school. Father Junipero Serra, as we would call him, was a great hero to Californians, all Californians, for what he did for the, for the Native American Indians and and. and, and uh, and, uh, of course, uh, when the nuns would come and teach us catechism once a week, he was a major hero. And, you know, I guess the basic plan of those missionaries was to build a mission, one day's walk, right? Something from one day's walk to the next. So that's, how we, that's how we were taught as kids. That's right. Yeah. So now, so tell us, the, the, tell us, Christian, a little bit about yourself first, and then we're going to, and then how you got interested in this, and then we'll have you really tell the real story of this mission sure. trail. Sure, Bear. And I'd like to thank uh, David Arms, who was one of your guests on a couple of uh, weeks ago. And he's the uh, Miles to Demanhood. His, he uh, was a student of mine, and he connected us. So I'm, I'm really grateful uh, for that. So I live in San Mateo, California. I've written four books on mission history, uh, mainly focusing on St. Huda Rosera, because uh, he got a bad rap. And, you know, my students, I teach all boys in a Catholic uh, high school. Right. They're like, hey, Mr. Clifford, I'm a little confused. You seem to be uh, a real fan of our school's namesake, but I'm reading this online. It was just coming up in uh, 
when Pope Francis uh, announced in January of 2015 that he would come to the United States and canonize Bunda Barossera. And uh, so they're they getting mixed messages. So it led me to this new part of my vocation as an educator to, to be an author as well, to clarify using the historical method, primary sources to help. Right. Mainly we got to go to primary sources because so yeah. much. I mean, if you believe everything the, the, the Internet says about what Einstein said, you know, they have That's all true. these quotes. Einstein once said this. No, he didn't. You have yeah. to go to primary sources. And I know when I when it first happened, I was talking to mine who's a a friend of mine who's a big surfer, had a surf store in Ventura County. And I said, yeah, so Father Sarah was saying, is, is a saint. And he goes, if you knew all the evil, that I'm a history major, I know how evil all that was. But can you first just share with us what the vision of the missionaries were for these mission, these mission sure. um, churches and what their actual mission was in building them, who they were working? Yeah, yeah. sure. So uh, real quick, um, Junipero Serra was a Franciscan friar from Mallorca, Spain, and he was a brilliant professor and um, a very holy man and respected by his students. And uh, But he really felt God was calling him to something more. And when the word came from New Spain, what we you know mainly call Mexico now, um, for the need for uh, more missionaries. What year was he, this? What year was this? So this is about 1749. Okay. He, he, he rang the bell and he's like, I, I want to go. I want to go. And he, uh, at great cost to himself, he, uh, physical, emotional, he came to Mexico, uh, went to just north of Mexico City where the Franciscans had a university where they learned how to be missionaries, how to speak the local, local languages, to learn the cultures, uh, what's going to be uh, time tested to work to kind of preach the gospel and california was part of mexico it's, it's, all, it's all part of new spain yeah the the, yeah. the the colonies of spain in the new world and um he actually ended up uh being a missionary to basically lapsed catholics at the time in the sierra gordo region north of mexico city for about 20 years until six, 1768 uh, Spain really wanted to make inroads in what they, on a map, said was theirs, California, because you brought up Fort Ross earlier. The Russians were colonizing, you know, they're coming down from Alaska. And back in uh, Madrid, they were fearful that they were going to make inroads on traditional lands that they thought were theirs. But there are no, there are no Spaniards here. That was the big problem. Uh, they'd been here as, you know, explorers on ships and so on, but temporarily. And of course, the uh, British were making some inroads too, up in the uh, Portland area, along the Columbia River. So, anyways, they wanted to get boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. there, there sandals, was, sandals on the ground. Yeah, sandals and boots. It was actually yeah. uh, collectively known as the Sacred Expedition. You had the military wing and you had the religious wing, and both were working for the state. But wait a minute, why, why in the world would they bring the, the the religious with them on this on this expedition? So, I mean, that's what's that, so cool. Yeah, that's, well, that's where it gets a little complex, too, because they were working for the crown, but, but they wanted to set up little towns, you know, the missions, which were like little villages back in Spain. And they wanted to Christianize, make, make Spaniards of the locals here. So back in uh, Madrid and in London and in St. Petersburg, the Spanish diplomats can be like, hey, that's our land. We have people there. Stay mm -hmm. away. Because when the uh, California Indian was baptized freely, when they freely accepted the faith, uh, they also became Spanish uh, citizens. So that was the big geopolitical, you know, uh, plan. Yeah, in that time and that day, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it became a reality for about, probably about one out of four California Indians were connected to okay. the missions. Okay, so, were, so where did they start the mission? Uh, was it in Baja? Was it uh, was so, it San Diego? Or where did they start? Yeah. So 1768, Junipero Serra finally got the okay to do what he always wanted to do, and that was to evangelize natives who never heard the gospel. Oh, man. How and do you do he, that? Yeah, and he, and he goes, uh, the Spanish government said, we're going to put you— in Baja, California, there are already missions there because they kicked out the Jesuits on a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Geologically, the Jesuits were seen as um, economic uh, 
they were just seen as a threat by we many royals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In uh, in Europe, so they were um, called back. To but listen, Europe. listen, listen. Let's take a break right here, Christian. Yeah, because yeah, it's because you could go all the way back to Our Lady of Guadalupe and the the human right. sacrifice that was going on in those days. So to that 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 you know, thank God for the, the the Christianization of that of Mexico. People don't understand all of that, but we don't want we can't go back all that far. Even even though I know you're a teacher, you're inclined to Christian Clifford. Where can people find you? At missions1769.com. That's my website. And and you have a, a pill. You have, do you lead these pilgrimages? Just just uh, just to let people know where we're going with this. Yeah. No, I don't lead the pilgrimages. I went on the 800 mile uh, pilgrimage of the California Mission Trail. Did you walk on. that? Did you walk yeah. that? Okay. We want to talk about. So we're going to get more into that when we get back. This tell. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and our guest, Christian Clifford. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Do you know what I've been working on just now? Uh, before I started this radio show is I'm working on the new logo for the Spirit of Adventure uh, sailing boat that we have in the Virgin Islands area. Uh, we have waiting lists now for people who want to join us. We have uh, men retreats that we're holding on. It, it's four, four bedrooms or, you know, four baths, so there's room for just so many people. But we have sailing retreats for uh, fathers and sons. We have sailing retreats for just men. We have sailing retreats for couples. And so uh, go, to, go to our website, um, deepadventure.com and you can find out more about that uh, but but we're we're really excited that Cindy and I more and more people have saw, saw these little hints of Cindy in our TV show Long Ride Home and they're saying we want more of, of you and Bear together you and Cindy together so Cindy and I are starting to do a, a new YouTube show called uh, Spirit of uh, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure excuse me, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy, but it's on our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And Lex, you just get to go where we go. You know, Cindy and I, uh, you know, went out tandem surfing yesterday. We put a Go GoPro camera on the surfboard, and then we may sit on the beach and just talk story about um, the beauty of the Lord. And so the idea is to bring you to the beauty and the adventure of the islands, whether we're here in Hawaii or sailing in the, in the Caribbean. And then bring people to the Lord. Bring the good news of Jesus Christ. Bring the good news of Catholic formation. But bring it to people in a way that they'll kind of watch and go, oh, this is really cool. And that, that couple really loves each other. Isn't that nice? And then all of a sudden, uh, we're giving them the gospel. It kind of sneaks up on them, just like our our gospel message in uh 
with our motorcycle TV show, Long Ride Home, uh, that airs on EWTN. So get we're getting excited about that. Go to the YouTube channel, please, and subscribe now. Bear Wozniak, Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel, and because uh, 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 pretty soon we're going to be rolling out those uh, – rolling out the, the new show with Bear and Cindy. We also have all these 60-second shorts that we, we release when you subscribe to the channel. You get about one every other day that are just really cool. A lot of them coming from my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, which is you know all cowboy-themed and uh, stuff that you can share and you can be involved in the new evangelization and uh, other things that you can share with, your, with everyone that will kind of draw them to Christ. So I'm excited about today. We have, as our guest, Christian Clifford. He's an he's a instructor at a Catholic school that I think is named after Father Sarah, and uh, he's an expert in the El Camino, which is not the one that we think about sometimes when people think of the Camino in Europe. This is the El Camino Real. I was raised on this. I was raised on the El Camino Real, and uh, it, it was an 800-mile trek uh, with one mission town, one mission uh, after another that these, these uh, Catholic missionaries led by Father Sarah planted uh, from Baja all the way up almost uh, way north of San Francisco. You know, I'd, one thing I remember, Clifford, uh, Christian, is that when we would go to these missions, it would be hot sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you go inside the mission itself with those thick, thick mud walls, whatever, adobe walls, yep. Yep. remember, it's always very cool in there, cool. isn't it? Yeah. They yeah. Were there and it was warm in the winter. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. their little beds that they slept on were just, I mean, I, they were, they were, you know, they were not, it wasn't like uh, staying at the lo local Marriott. Yeah, so, or the Moana, the Moana. Yeah, yeah, right, the Moana. That, that, we call that our living room. People think that we yeah. send pictures of, of Cindy and I sitting there and they think, oh, that's your living room. You're doing well. No, no, we call it our living room. <laughs> anyway, so, so you were telling us about why they did this and, uh, and go ahead, just. Yeah, so, so uh, like I was saying, the Jesuits are suppressed, called back to Europe, and the Francis Franciscans took their place in their chain of missions in Baja, California. So Junipero Serra actually founded one mission in Baja, California. There's, there's a couple, uh, 24, I think, altogether. And, uh, and then he... Which one was it? Do you remember the name of it? What um, town it was? Because that's Surf City for all of us California surfers back in the day. We'd go down Baja. Drive yeah, so Loretto is the southern tip. I see. And I'm forgetting the uh, name um, right now. But then he's given instructions by the government, go to what was then called New California. Yeah, or, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, Nueva California. Actually, Baja California was known as Old California at that time. And he founded um, on July 1st, 1769, Mission San Diego. And that, that's why his wow. feast day is on July 1st. Um, he's the patron saint of vocations in the Catholic Church, of the voca of vocations to the priesthood mm. and religious. So uh, he founded the first nine in the modern state of California during his lifetime. The last being Mission San Buenaventura on March 31st, 1784. Is that one really uh, in Ventura? It, oh, it's from yeah, downtown. It's in Ventura, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you brought Ventura earlier. Uh, I, I raised my family uh, in the in the Thousand Oaks area, so I know okay. that mission. Yeah, very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So we we can talk about there because that that was kind of a flashpoint of the controversy. Really? Okay, let's talk story during, during about whole, that. Yeah, during the whole cultural uh, you know uh, time a couple of years ago, um, but the first night are founded by him. His predecessor, Father Lasuen, uh, uh from the Basque Country in uh, mm. Spain, he founds the next um, eleven. And then there's a couple, they're called Father Presidents. Uh, they're like the head Franciscan in charge of the whole enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, and then 21 are all founded together from San Diego to Sonoma. So that whole uh, one day apart, I think sometimes it's like after the 21 were founded is uh, a day's ride apart on, mm -hmm. a, on a horse. Mm -hmm. uh, because they weren't founded like... Mission San Diego is number one. Mission San Luis Rey is number two in Oceanside. Uh, they were kind of, you know, all over the place. But eventually you know, it kind of got down to that, right? Uh, yeah. Eventually it got down to that, yeah. But it mm. took a long time. Just about 45 years for that to happen. But how do they go about, um, because the, the, this, the, this, you hear two stories. What is the controversy that they, 
that sure. they took over the Indians that made them into slaves. And so can you lay out what the controversy is and then tell us the, what the, what the uh, actual primary historical documents teach us? Absolutely. So um, you're talking about the, the call and discipleship to evangelize. They definitely did that. They're men of their time. They took what they kind of knew worked best. And I think from the modern perspective, we would kind of like, oh, I would never do that today, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are certain things that they did do that we would frown upon today in the church. Um, but he loved the natives. The, the, his writings, he talks about how much he loves the natives. Uh, one, uh, in terms of the whole, uh, the arguments against Christianization, colonization by the Spaniards would be like, well, they saw the natives as their children, their fathers. And it's like, well, they are. They're, they're spiritual children, just like our parish priest today. Yeah. He's our spiritual father. So I, I think see. there's a disconnect in how they understand terminology, lexicon, things like that. Mm -hmm. or, or they're just flat out they know and they're trying to demonize, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, who are you to tell me what to believe and all that stuff? So the word that gets thrown around a lot is genocide. Uh, and I would say like real extreme, but unfortunately people make the claim and then they, like we were talking about earlier, they, hey, I read this online, it was a genocide, they are concentration camps, uh, but they don't support it, it's just a claim, but it's supporting my own bias. In, mm -hmm. in what I feel. Well, yeah, we know all about That's that kind of this day and age, right? right? Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, because the, um, surely they had their problems. Uh, we have two kind of, um, opposing viewpoints that are both inaccurate. One is really comes out in the like 1930s and 40s. This kind of mission myth, like here come here comes Father Sarah and the the Spanish Franciscans and all the natives in California were like, yay, this is great. Um, that's inaccurate. And then on the flip side, you have the um, the Garden of Eden myth. Boy, before you spit Europeans came, everything was great for natives. It was like paradise on earth, which we also know is inaccurate. So the truth lies somewhere in the middle. And I just wanted to stress in uh, Sarah's writings that he loved the natives. Now where it gets really kind of complex is he felt about 140 Spanish Franciscans uh, we're here in New California at I mean, one the, point. Those guys are men, dude. 142. Guys. I mean, those are tough guys. I mean, that's when you, you didn't say, you know, you say you inviting people on a pilgrimage. They went on an expedition. That's the word you use, right? Gnarly. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always wondered when I was out there walking the 800 mile California mission trail, I'm like, how did those guys do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, Sarah, for the most part, didn't use a mule because, you know, he's a Franciscan. There's got to be some pain at work in what he's doing <laughs> and i'm like you know i am in great pain i got blisters i'm mm -hmm. losing toenails uh this is not fun early on in the, the whole uh, there's no starbucks yeah. around the corner yeah, hey we're no talking Star we're talking with christian yeah. clifford and he is an expert on the the 800 mile mission trail the al camino real as we know it in cal as we knew it when i was young in california we're going to talk more about what what the franciscans did we're going to talk more about the trail and we're talking about how you can take that you can take that uh pilgrimage he's an author many books on the on the al camino where can they find your find you and find your books christian at uh, amazon at uh, missions 1769.com Okay, good. We're talking with Christian Clifford. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy.
Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Be resolute. Do you ride for the brand? Do you ride for God? Do you ride for yourself? On the right hand corner of my desk, I have a small engraved plaque that reminds me daily of my code of riding for the brand. It is based on the name of the desk in the Oval Office that first belonged to President Hayes. He lived in the days of the burgeoning West in the days of the Cowboys after the Civil War. He named that desk the Resolute. The plaque on the right front top of my desk is based on that. It reads Resolute Desk, Thy Will be done. Be resolute. Serve God humbly and serve God boldly. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to uh, go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com. We want to invite the men to come, uh, the mama bears to come. Uh, we want the men to join our man cave and our school of manliness. We have a monthly curriculum that we go through together. You go through it on your own. You have a login. It has uh, lessons uh, uh, month by month uh, on different areas. Uh, for example, uh, one of the areas where we just went through together as men is every man's got to have a creed and a code he can live by. And so you go through and you watch audio. You listen to some. You you listen to some audio. You watch some video. You may have some written content, and you do that. You do that on your own. But then the men we're all going through the same curriculum at the same time. So we have a Zoom meetup about once a month, and we talk story about about that, and we get gritty and we get real with each other. But what's really cool is we have a man cave there, so the men can can. It's a non Facebook community. Uh, it's it's uh, and the men can share what's going on in their lives. They can talk uh, more directly about the what we're what we've been in discussion about. We pray for each other. We share our kind of hold my beer type moments. But the men are getting uh, uh, logins for their sons. Now their sons are not allowed to go to the man cave, but it isolates them and they go just to the school of manliness. And fathers are leading their sons through that through that school. It's based on one of my books, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue, and my newest book. 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cow cowboys gone? So come and join the man cave. It's just a bunch of knuckle draggers, kind of Neanderthals uh, that are working to form each other and to be formed in the Lord. So we'd love to have you come, bearschoolofmanliness.com. And Mama Bears, we have something there, there for you too. So we, our guest today is Christian Clifford. He's an expert on the 800-mile Al Camino Real, uh, uh, the Royal Highway, uh, in uh, California that I was raised on. I lived on many different parts of that. And to me, Father Junipero Serra was a hero. And, uh, and, um, and he's recently, and he was. Because in order to be a saint, you have to live a life of heroic virtue. So uh, Christian, welcome back to the show. So go ahead and tell us more. You were developing what, 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 what the mission of the missionaries was. Um, so like I'm, I'm kind of trying to remember where I was. Where well, we were, we were talking about how Father uh, Sarah loved the Indians. But to talk about the flashpoint oh, you said sure. that happened at, sure. at the missionary in Ventura, Buena Ventura. Sure, sure. What happened Thank there? You. Yeah, talk, tell us about yeah. that and what the truth of everything is. Sure. So Sarah gets a little controversial just for the simple fact that the Padres were in charge of the mission. But you also had the Presidio and the soldiers, right? So each mission had... Uh, ideally, two friars and uh, four to five um, soldiers. And then the presidios at uh, San Francisco, Santa Barbara, Monterey, S San Diego, Monterey. Yeah, they I pumped remember. about 50 to 60. Oh, right? so I thought there was a, like 100 or so soldiers at every mission. Oh, no. Mission. Oh, no. And each mission oh. had sometimes up to um, 
you know, thousands of uh, natives, right? So about so they could bucks, they couldn't have oppressed them if they wanted to. I, I, I know you just look at the numbers, the mere numbers. And out of the 142 friars that worked in this part of the world over a 50 year period, only two were killed. Uh, and one was ah. kind of one was kind of questionable. Like, was he really killed? The one at Santa Cruz, Mission Santa Cruz, mm. uh, much later after Junipero Serra. But during Junipero Serra's lifetime, the first there was one martyr at San Diego very early on. It was very difficult bringing the, uh, the gospel message to this part of the world. Uh, San Diego had a couple of revolts. Uh, there was a, a, the big Chumash revolt mm -hmm. in the 18, I wanna say like 1818 18, during the transition into Mexican times and so on. So what were they, but, what were they revolting against? Were there being, cause you hear, well, a, yeah. Yeah, so you, um, like I was saying, the friars were in charge of the mission. The soldiers were, in charge of you know, protecting the mission, uh, the the presidios, and sometimes the Spanish uh, soldiers were not very good Catholic men. Right. They did not. They did not. They. We know the history of the Caribbean. Catholic. We know the history. Yeah. 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 No, they they uh, mistreat mainly uh, local native women. And really. Sometimes, sometimes oh, that would lead to revolt. Yeah. Yeah. Very Obviously, much. it should. Yeah. Oh my and goodness. And Sarah and Sarah would say, hey make the friars in charge of discipline. I don't want the, uh, the soldiers to be in charge of discipline because mm. they'll go overboard. So oh. uh, Sarah never used corporal punishment, but he was for it. He said, if, if you know, something oh. happens here in the mission, you know, you're going to be disciplined just like uh, back in Spain. Dude, I, I, when I was in school and when I was in school, man, I remember having the belt on eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. someone kept picking on me and I finally fought back. So then I got in trouble. But yeah. I mean, uh, but but why? Why was there a need for discipline? Why? What what gave yeah. us the, 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 the what gave them the right to even think that they, they should have a role of discipline? Tell us. A, yeah. That's where yeah, all, think, a lot of this, this the, the culture of the times and things like that. Explain that to us. Yeah, I think that um, Sarah being a mendic in the mendicant order, mendicant order of the Franciscans, and a lot of their kind of philosophy and theology was from the Middle Ages. It's mm. kind of carrying it too. And you know, they he did self-flagellation as a form right. of penance and prayer, and that mm. was kind of seen as heroic by a lot of Spaniards. And there was also the sense yeah. of total obedience to your superior. Yeah. Yeah, so he so was. I, I see. Yeah, he took that and applied it to the uh, to the Indians when they were out of line, especially in areas of uh, sexuality. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you know, you you can't do that now that you're Catholic. You can't do that. Mm. Another thing that was, um, they give the, it was. There's a lot of evidence. They give uh, Native Christians or Mission Indians kind of passes to go home. And this is actually after Sarah's time. It was more prominent when they'd be given passes to go for like a weekend leave to go visit your family who was still pagan mm -hmm. and, the, and the indian would be like screw this i don't want to work uh six hours a day you know i want to go home and and do what i used to do mm -hmm. i mean that was the average work day right. for the you right. know six hours right and really um, they had a six hour work day that was pretty good to me oh those I, slave drivers I okay know. i know and, and, so and by the way I, who benefited from their work uh they did it, it was basically a uh, communal. What? What? It was to sustain their own life. Is, it wasn't to yeah. make Spaniards yeah. rich. No, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, sometimes the fear was, and again, this is after Sarah's time, after he died in 1784. No, but tell me when they get they, when 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 they would go, you're going to continue when they give them these passes, right? You're going to yeah, finish, yeah, and, okay. and they and some a couple would stay there. The evidence shows it was like anywhere between five to ten percent would actually stay there. Whereas most just came home, came back to the mission. That was their new home. You know, that's what I they see. knew, they loved, right? And um, so they actually would give them warnings. Hey, you gotta come back. Because from the Franciscan perspective, they were fearful that the Christian Indian would lose their soul. They, right, they'd go exactly. Back yeah. their old and then they saw them kind of almost like uh, they would a, a fellow brother. You know that you, yes, we're right. living this life. This is how we. This is how we're a community. This life and the next life, right? Yeah, right. So, so um, they've been given a couple of warnings, and there is evidence that a couple of times they were seen as like fugitives, and uh, Mission Indian allies, soldiers, and Spanish soldiers, actually Mexican soldiers, because it's during the Mexican time we saw right, this right, right. because it's a really unsteady time politically and economically. 
uh, they'd actually go out and take him back by force. Yeah. Which so that, that, that was a, we would see that as very uncool today. But uncool. in that time and place, when you had your part of our family, we're not going to let you just, yeah. you know, dr drift yeah. away. And so, so what was the flashpoint then in, 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 uh, in Ventura that you mentioned? So during the whole uh, George Floyd protest and that, you know, what followed, oh, yeah, course, yeah. the whole uh, tearing down of statues and so on. In, in Santa Barbara, right at the end of that main street that goes yeah. to the city. State Street, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, State Street. It looked down from like 1936. Beautiful, there's, yeah. There's been a really powerful, manly portrayal of Junipero Serra in statue form looking out into the Pacific. And there was a uh, group of uh, mainly young Native American activists and some allies who were like, we're going to go there and tear that thing down because of colonial oppression and all that cultural genocide and, and so on. And actually, there's a small Catholic liberal arts college in um, Ojai, outside mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, St. Thomas, is it Aquinas? Yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas. Yeah, yeah. Aquinas. And uh, mainly students from there made a human chain around the statue and protected it. Oh. So it, so it did go through a Beautiful. democratic process of sorts. Uh, the city council you know, heard the public's comments and so on. It's all online. And it was peacefully removed. Oh, it's so true. You know that that that's that is that is uh, the uh, the destruction of history. Yeah, but is one the of the hallmarks. Is, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, there is some good news. It, it did eventually. It, it wasn't just torn down, you know, and desecrated and and all that. But uh, it did go through a democratic process, and it was removed, and it was put into safekeeping, and it's now just on February 29th. Put at Mission San Buenaventura oh, on beautiful. its grounds, which Good. is a great story. Thanks mm -hmm. to Father Thomas Elowat, the pastor there, who really spearheaded it, and people of goodwill and Catholics from all over. So that's great news. It made it's basically home because that was the last mission he founded. Oh, praise God! Yeah. But I'm getting tired of hearing you talk about all that stuff. I want to hear about your bunions. Oh yeah. No, so so no, no. Actually, thank you so much for bringing the truth. Of that and 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 a, and, a, and, a, and a perspective from f that really is balanced, uh, yeah. but uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to do the that people can actually do this 800 mile trek, uh, and uh, we're talking with Christian Cl Clifford. Where can they find you, Christian? At missions1769.com. Yeah, it's so cool to meet a man of passion, and who has the knowledge, and that you're a student of the actual primary documents. And uh, and so you so we're going to talk a little bit about when uh, you actually what you experienced what what you experienced uh, in physically <laughs> and what maybe how the Lord might have touched you on your 800 mile trek up uh, I imagine he went up the California coast I don't know uh, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, 
Where have all the cowboys gone? We live in a crossfire hurricane, for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Men must come to grips with the fact that we were born into the midst of the crossfire of a spiritual battlefield. The battle rages on, and so many men do not even realize that they are in a fight to the death. They seem like little children wandering through the streets of Beirut in the middle of a war fight. They're in a battle and they don't even know it. Wake up, stand up, and fight. Fight the good fight. And you wage that war by love, by self-donation, and by prayer. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you to uh, go to um, EWTN, watch our TV series, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, and go to uh, Prime Video. You can watch it there, too. If you come to our website, Bear School of Manliness, and you become a mama bear or a member of the man cave, you get access to all 33 episodes. And the last 11 are so cool. They're all filmed here uh, in Hawaii. And uh, these, these, these uh, bikers showing up here in Hawaii, it's, it's quite, a, quite, a, quite a trip to have them here and take them sailing and surfing and all of that. So uh, check out our, our newest season of Long Ride Home on EWTN as well as on Prime Video and, and at uh, bearschoolofmanliness.com. Our guest today is um, Christian Clifford. He's an expert on the, uh, the um, Royal Road, the Al Camino Real, the, the road that the, missions basic, the missionaries basically trekked as when they planted all the missions in California. And you can't really call yourself an effort, ec- expert unless you've walked it. So how, what, when did you, when did you, you know, I got, so I'm going to tell you something. So when I was a kid, I had this vision to do that too, to, to get on a bicycle and do that. It ended up, I, I ended up pedaling my bicycle from San Diego to Jacksonville, Florida. Whoa. Which is right, or Saint Augustine, which is where the first yeah. mass was celebrated on the mainland. So from the from the first missionary mission to to that one, but um, so I never ended up doing that. So tell me, how did you get inspired to do it? And tell tell us all about that. We want to hear about it. Sure. So I'm a uh, part of the uh, California Missions Conference, and uh, there are all these eggheads that love California mission history and so on, scholars, experts. And I was at their uh, annual conference, and uh, this is you know like twenty. 13 or something like that and oh no i'm sorry it's about 2017 and i came across a group called the california mission walkers and i'm like hey i introduced myself and and the great group of people they love walking between the missions the california missions like well that's pretty interesting you know like uh Mm -hmm. you brought it up earlier the camino de santiago back in spain that Mm -hmm. ancient village route uh well i didn't even know we kind of had something like that here and I'd been to all 21 California missions. You had? Driven, wow, wow. Yeah, I'd, I'd driven to them when I, back when I was single. And um, and fast forward to 2019, and my wife and son uh, had to uh, go to the Philippines, and I was left home alone. And a couple of days after, I was really bored. And I, I remember really? that. Group. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. It happened like, like that. It happened like it that. It happened just like that. And I'm like, hey, that California Mission Walkers. I'm going to look into those guys. I have a little time on my hands. How hard can it be? I was in the Scouts. I was in the Navy. How hard can it be to walk? To walk? And boy, oh boy, I started walking and it no, was wait, 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 wait. Now, did, now, did you join a group or were you, or you just started well, in San Diego and headed north? So in, in, in my book, it's it's... San Diego all the way to... Okay, um, wait a minute. Let's do that. Christian yeah. Clifford, you have this book on the pilgrimage. Where can they find it? At uh, Amazon, mission1769.com. Uh, and just for ease, I start at San Diego and, and up to Sonoma. But in reality, I kind of did bits and pieces. I kept journals and so on. Then I kind of tied it all together. So you would do uh, a few a few missions at a time and then yeah, go down so and like, where you laugh. laugh and yeah, that, that's the way to... Probably uh, the only way most people could do it. 
Yeah, I literally had a map of California and I kind of like, okay, I walked between uh, San Luis Obispo and, uh, you know, this point. So that the next time I picked up there, I didn't have to backtrack. Oh, so you would of- go to that last spot. So you started, you, you did it pretty much in sequence, though. You, no. You, or do a slice. Really. So you did a slice here and a slice there. But eventually you, 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 you connected all the dots. That's well, right. Tell, exactly. tell, tell us uh, uh, the, you know, the, an adventure. That's our ministry, spirit of adventure. Just means things went wrong. So what yeah. went wrong? Tell us that part, and then we want to hear how, how God touched you. Gosh, or what? there are so, so many stories <laughs> of what went wrong. Um, one, I did most of the pilgr- pilgrimage on my own, so that's probably what went wrong. I know you like quiet, and, and you, know, you, can, you can pray better, I think. You're more focused. But it really is better with other people to help you out along the way when you need to be lifted up. You mm. know? I, I, so that California Mission Walkers group, uh, they have a Facebook group, great group of people. They even had like hostels along the way. They'll be like, uh, you, you kind of put the word out, hey, I'm walking between these points. And somebody be like, hey, you can stay at my place those days, you know? Now, the El Camino, uh, it goes inland or does it go up the Big Sur route? So the reason why it's 800 miles but on foot is, you know, when, it, when it, that first night I kind of figured out, hey, I'm going to do this. I put it in my phone on Google Maps or whatever, Yahoo Maps, and it said, 520 miles or something like that, Sonoma to San Diego. And, but in reality, it's 800 miles because it's not one line. It'd be like, like this, mm-hmm. from one mission to the next. So most are within 50 miles of the coast. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the furthest inland is uh, Mission San Antonio de Padua. Mm-hmm. And, oh. um, but then you have missions like San Buenaventura that are overlooking the ocean. But you've got San Juan so, Batista inland there too. A little bit inland, yeah. yeah. So it's like a little zigzag almost, right? I see. So that's what ends up being about 800 miles. Okay, so now tell us, tell us what what uh, insights did you have about the Lord, about your faith, or just about life on on this journey? Well, I think uh, I had so many um, to, to to talk yeah, about. Yeah, give it. Yeah. Well, well, the, the thing I want to focus on was okay. because of the controversy and all that. Back in, I think, 2017, I spoke to a great group of Catholics called the Tekakwitha Conference. And they're mm. actually uh, Native Americans, Catholics. And they love the church. They love God. And what the, the, uh, the, the Europeans brought to them especially mm-hmm. their, their mm-hmm. Christ, right? Mm-hmm. And I gave a talk on um, the subject of one of my books, uh, Pablo Talk, who was actually a Mission Indian who went all the way to, to uh, Europe, to Rome, to study for the priesthood. This is back in the 1820s. And he's just a young boy talking about an adventure, right? Mm-hmm. And he wrote, he wrote the language of his people. His writings are the earliest from a California Indian. Oh, you mean that this is a Chumash... So, uh, man, no. that, that was a trek. You had to get across. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Did he go he was, uh, by ship south or did he? Oh, wow. Yeah, he, he was Luis Senyo, Luis Senyo Indian. Wow. But anyway, uh, long story short, in my book, I really wanted to focus because, unfortunately, those who are really vocal about the whole uh, Sarah controversy and so on, they drown out those who maybe are kind of on the fence who are Native American or maybe they're they're not courageous enough to say hey i love sarah and what he brought i pray to him every day and i'm grateful for what mm. he brought uh they're they're silenced and their stories are out there that the, mm. the, there's quite so, so i walked with them i walked with their ancestors i walked with the spanish franciscans i walked with the spanish soldiers um i walked with them all on that trip you, and you I got envisioned to go, you, you envisioned all of the yeah oh, it, I, I, it was I, like I, a spirit I, walk it's amazing. So as you're walking along, uh, you know, you I, I've had this happen too, where I'm, I'm I'm someplace and all of a sudden, I see all of the buildings disappear, yeah. and I see a small village, and I see uh, the Native American Indians or the first settlers, and I wonder just what they would think if suddenly yeah. if they could see suddenly 200 years in the future what they would think. But for us to be able to I- imagine them uh, being there with us and what they were living and what they were experiencing. Did, what yeah. what what else did you did you were you able to go to mass at most of those churches? So I mean the uh, missionaries. Not at, most. not at most, but definitely some, and that was mm. really great. Uh, one of the things I bring up in my book 
that was really a, a great religious awakening of sorts was at Mission uh, San Fernando Rey, which is in the San Fernando Valley, just north of Los Angeles. I, I kind of quietly went through the back of the Mission Church and there is a baptism taking place. And I just quietly took a pew and here's a, a baby, uh, a young boy, an old uh, woman, all being baptized. And it was in Spanish. And mm. don't like, you love that? Don't this you? Is, this, this is my church. I love my church. It's just, yeah. it's everyone under the sun is right here, man. Yeah, and, every, every walk of life. Yeah, every walk of life. Saints and sinners, right? Like St. Augustine said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been talking with Christian Clifford. How can they find out more about you? We gotta, we're about to end this segment. Where yeah. can they reach you? Uh, uh, missions1769.com. And I have a email me if you have any questions, comments. I have social media, Missions1769. You just put that in there. Give, give, us stuff. Some of the, give us the titles of your books. You've got so many yeah, books. Yeah, sure. There. Uh, I talked about this with my high school students, so I turned it into a book, St. Junipero Serra, Making Sense of the History and Legacy to help young people make sense of all mm -hmm. this stuff. Right? Uh, this one's for little kids. My, my son gave me the idea for the uh, title, Who Was St. Junipero Serra for about third, fourth grade age. Mm -hmm. And uh, Meet Pablo Talk, my third book, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Luis Senyo Indian who did great things. Indian from the far shores of California is a subtitle. And then... Uh, pilgrimage, the story of my 800 mile pilgrimage. I hope the these. Mission trail. I hope these are in every single mission church. You know, we got to go. We're talking with Christian nope. Clifford, and again, where can they find you? Missions1769.com. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.